Ladies and gentlemen, Roger the Leprechaun Carroll has not joined us this afternoon, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fighting pride of Knuckle Up Fitness, fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Detroit, Michigan, Mr. Dave Vitke. Hey, Dave, Jeremy, your next MMA fighter. Uh, you're coming off uh, a very strong, uh, you know, series of fights against Warren Thompson, the, obviously the last one ending in a draw. What have you been working on to make sure that your next fight, that, you know, you leave no question, you win it decisively? Mainly pushing the pace, trying to fix the holes in my game, uh, closing distance, getting it to the floor, working my stand-up, just working the main things that you need to work in a fight. Dave, Frank Millsap. Uh, Hi, Frank. Hi, Dave. <laughs> so, you know, you, you're you you're studying your jiu-jitsu under Master Ricardo Mergel at yes, Knuckle sir. Up Fitness down in Sandy Springs. And my question to you is this. Roger Carroll, man, I mean, he, that guy, is, he is like the uh, Noguera of Atlanta. Um, the guy, even though he fights out of North Carolina, the guy takes a beating, but he always finds a way to come back and submit people after he's taken a beat. Tim Stout put probably one of the biggest beatings I've ever seen live, and he ended up coming back and submitting Tim Stout. How is your jiu-jitsu being trained under Master Mergel? How do you think your jiu-jitsu is going to be towards uh, Mr. Carroll? Um, I've been training with Master Mergel for about a year and a half now, and – he hasn't steered me wrong once. I've been competing at tournaments, doing really well. I just recently uh, tapped out Tex Johnson, who, you know, is very good, uh, won Worlds, third place in Worlds at, as a brown belt. So, um, and he just recently tapped uh, Roger Carroll at a jiu-jitsu tournament. So, my game plan is still the same. I'm just going to, I don't see him submitting me. You know, he's never had anyone as big as me, as strong as me. Uh, with jiu-jitsu like mine. I'm not saying I'm the best off my back, but if I get on top of you, it's, it's bad news. Hey, Dave. It's Chrissy. Hey. Hey, <laughs> with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, so my secret sources tell me that your nickname is Shrek. What's up with that? I've got like four nicknames. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess um, people in my gym call me Shrek because my ears and just because I'm always smiling and goofing with the kids. we got a big kids program, so I'm always smiling. That's a nice side of you. Thank you. Vitke is Jeff Chasner. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Great, man. So a couple of years ago, I think you probably could have been considered a journeyman, huh? And uh, the past couple of years, like Jeremy was talking about, you kind of been on a tear. you kind of gone from this journeyman to one of the top 185-pound prospects in Georgia. So talk a little bit about that. I know, um, talk about the transition over the past couple of years and, uh, and where you see yourself in two more years. Well, I guess a lot of it has to do with just maturity. You know, like as I was younger, I was maybe more cocky and not as much as training as I should have been doing. And now that I've like, you know, been through the ups and downs of the game and, you know, at a point in my career where I'm just having fun with it. I'm 31 years old. I figure I got a few more years to fight. And right now I'm really pushing myself uh, with everything. My cardio, I'm trying to, I got a girlfriend now that uh, treats me well and I stay out of trouble and I just train and work. I'm a personal trainer. And uh, I really think it's my time for to beat Roger Carroll because, I mean, he's beaten everybody here. He's beaten my friend Clint Hester, I watched that. He beat my friend Tex Johnson, I watched that. And every time I was like, I want, a, I want a piece of them, you know. And now is my time, and it's going to happen. Yeah, I was going to ask you about, you know, uh, why you wanted to fight Roger. You're definitely covering it there. Um, Roger definitely, uh, see, every time I've seen him fight, he seems like he, he wants to stand and bang, and he kind of lures people into his jits game. And he kind of makes it seem like he's not going to do it, but he always figures out a way to tap somebody out. Like, how do you plan to, uh, to you know, combat that and dictate the pace of the fight your way and win well, it that way? <clears throat> I don't want to give away too much, but I'm planning on uh, just grinding it out. Like, I know he's tough. He takes a beating. So 
you know, my idea would be a perfect win for me would be TKO from punches or a submission if he gives me one. But, but um, I mean, I, it could go a decision because um, he's tough as nails. But, you know, as much as I respect him, I'm still going to go in there and try to take his head off. So this, uh, Dave, this fight set at 185 pounds. How easy is the cut for you to 185? Not easy at all. Not easy. What are you walking around at? Right now about 205. Wow. Last week, I, I just switched up my diet too, but I'm training more. So I switched up my diet. I lost five pounds last week. I was down to 200. And then I guess from all the training, I'm to 205. I've been eating clean. I think it's just muscle that's put on me real quick. But I'm, I'm pretty lean right now, but I'm going to be even leaner in four weeks. So. It's going to be tough. Do you ever see yourself dropping to 170? Man. <laughs> it's a question. The reason yeah. why is, I mean, if you have the right plan, you know, if you have the right diet plan, you have the right instructors, the right coaches to help you get down to, to that weight, and you're talking about pure water weight, you know, we all know that we can actually drop that last 10 to 15 pounds of water within a two-day time period oh, yeah. and actually be able to rehydrate and be back up to where we are, you know, back to 180, 185, 190. You know, as a, what are you, 5'11"? 5'11", yeah. You're 5'11". Mm -hmm. You know, at 185 pounds, 5'11 is, is, you know, maybe your average Older. height yeah. or short. At 170, you'd be a monster. Yeah. You know, you look at guys like um, right now, we've got a fight coming up on Sunday. You've got uh, Nate Marquette, who's dropped from 85 down to 170, who's probably going to fight the, one of the toughest guys he's ever had at 170. Do you ever see yourself dropping down and making the sacrifice to, to make 170 and see where you can actually – touch somebody at 170 Frank absolutely man um you know I'd love to fight at 170 but for right now with like my situation I work at knuckle up fitness um in Sandy Springs you know I'm trying to juggle a lot of things and still be a professional fighter so maybe if I was able to make it to a big you know the big show possibly drop into 170 but for right now like I'm, I walk around at 205 210 so 185 is like my limit right now. But hopefully in the future I'll get to 170. I'd love that. Dave, what do you think your biggest strength is when you're in the cage? Um, my biggest strength, uh, I guess maybe stubbornness. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've taken some fights back in the day that I probably shouldn't have taken before I was training right. And, uh, you know, now that I'm on a – you know, a good regimen and got good people around me. Um, what was the question again? What's your biggest biggest strength? Oh, my biggest strength. Uh, yeah, um, my biggest strength right now would be uh, probably just grinding it out. Like, you know, I don't think there's any a whole lot of people that can like outlast me in jujitsu or in MMA or. I'm not talking about the UFC. I'm just talking about around here in Georgia. Um, so my biggest strength would be just my my spirit, my heart. So, Dave, I'm here representing GeorgiaFighters.com, and I think Oblis would yell at me if I didn't ask this question because there's been a lot of uh, publicity around North Carolina fighters versus Georgia fighters. Roger Carroll has come down here and beat some pretty high-level talent here in Georgia. Um, Give us a quote, man. Give us something to, you know, call out Roger Carroll. Or what, what do you have to say to Roger Carroll? Roger Carroll, if you're sitting here right now, man, <laughs> your ass is getting whooped <laughs> on the 23rd. Uh, yeah, Dave, talking about the Big Show a little bit, I'm curious, uh, you know, what pro fighters in the Big Show do you look up to and, and that, that you kind of, you know, Try to model your game after, or the, you, you just respect their fighting spirit, yeah, you know, past or present. Guys. Go ahead. There's a ton of guys. Um, one of my favorites is Kotor, Machida. Um, Kotor is probably one of the guys that I like to model myself after, um, you know, because a lot of the fight is in the clinch. You know, you can be standing up one minute and on the floor the next minute. So, you know, um, I just I like those fighters that just find ways to win, and that's that's kind of how Roger Carroll is. He finds a way, and I'm gonna find my way to f beat him. It seems Roger, I, from what I know of him, he kind of plays mind games with his opponents. 
Um, I've been fortunate enough to manage two guys who have fought Roger and seen the mind games. Do you, have you heard anything about the mind games that he, that he likes to play? And how, I recently I, have heard about some mind games that he likes to play, and uh, I'm just not going to fall into them at all. I'm going to avoid them at the weigh-ins. I'm just going to do my thing and get out of there. But uh, come game time, I'm going to have my uh, mean face on. Show us that mean face. <laughs> <laughs> Does Roger um, – what's the biggest threat Roger poses to you? Well, I would say two things. Probably his uh, cardio heart and uh, his jiu-jitsu. Um, but, that's, I mean, that's, that's, those are just threats, and I feel that I can uh, eliminate those threats. So, Is he a gatekeeper? He, he's he's definitely a gate. Well, I mean, I'd even post him as a little higher than a gatekeeper because, I mean, he's beaten really good names. I mean, I mean, when I saw him beat Clint, I mean, he made it. Clint's one of my friends, and uh, he's a really good MMA fighter around here. I saw him just, you know, avoid the punches, close the distance, took him down, and submitted him. It was made it look easy. So, I'm not letting that happen to me. Uh, Dave, you've had a lot of fights in your career. Uh, you've definitely been around the block. You know, uh, tell us about you know one moment in your fighting career that that uh, that you know it's, it's been special to you and that has driven you to to continue to comp to compete. One of my favorite experiences was I fought in uh, Tunica, Mississippi, in a tournament. It was a two hundred five pound tournament, and uh, I won my first two fights. And it was a tournament, so eight man tournament. And uh, my last fight was against Michael Pat. And uh, I, was, I had no, no jiu-jitsu at the time, and he was a brown belt. This was probably like four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. And uh, he ended up taking me to the floor and making him work with me. But that was one of the funnest times of my career because I was new in it, and I had won two fights in one night and actually fought three times. But it was a fun experience. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, he is the fighting pride of Knuckle Up Fitness out of Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Dave Vitkay.